An Amarillo firefighter may be adopting the dog he helped rescue from a sinkhole this morning. Amarillo's entire city council, including Mayor Ginger Nelson, were up for re-election and all faced challengers. Amarillo fire crews put up caution tape in hopes that no one else will fall into this sinkhole. We do have some breaking news to tell you about right now. According to the Eastern New Mexico News, there is an active shooter situation at the Clovis Carver Public Library. Outdoor burning is a big no during these upcoming coming months. As you can see by the counties here in red, most of the Texas Panhandle is currently under a burn ban. This type of simulation has never been done before in the Panhandle. A couple of weeks ago, I was given a preview of the new training and I even went through it myself. I'm here with Suzanne Talley to tell you all about some of the incentives you get when you come out and donate. Yeah. Here today, we have not one, but two t-shirts. <laughs> Panhandle is home to just under 2,500 people and I think most of the city showed up here tonight, and we're certainly glad they did because we had a lot of fun. We have some nice warm weather headed this way, but that may also come with some wind. Wind in March? And that doesn't ever right? happen what? around here. If you want to help fill some of these empty shelves, you can pick up one of these bags of hope here at the food pantry and fill it up the next time you go grocery shopping. The Salvation Army takes the food the students bring in and turns it into meals like goulash. This meal is entirely made up of leftovers. This saves the Salvation Army hundreds of dollars each week. The top five team names are the Boot Scooters, the Bronc Busters, the Sod Poodles, the Jerky, and the Long Haulers. We have a rivalry today, but at the end of the day, we're one team and we're trying to tackle Alzheimer's. Yeah, we got the trophy here. <laughs> we got the trophy. Pretty excited about guys, that. Guys, yeah. And I'm, I'm honored to be in the company of two stellar championship athletes right here. You know, I tried. Walls. I tried. Never released cell phone video shows Nathaniel Jewett discussing his plans for a mass shooting. News Channel 10's Cassie Stafford was in the courtroom all day and brings us the details from day one of his sentencing. A man is arrested after police say he attempted to rob a business in Amarillo over the weekend. It happened on Saturday around 6 in the morning at a business in the 800 block of East Amarillo Boulevard. Employees say a man pointed a handgun at them, demanded money, but then left without any money or items from the store. Later, officers found 19-year-old Jeremiah's Medina near the scene who matched the description of the suspect. Medina was booked into the Potter County Detention Center for aggravated robbery and other municipal warrants. Well, we're usually not all that happy about a cold front coming through in February. But the one moving in tonight will knock our winds down at least for one day. For a first look at that front, let's send it over to Allen in the Storm Track Center. All right, thanks, Allen. Because of those dry conditions, 13 counties in the Texas Panhandle are now under a burn ban. The burn ban prohibits any open flames outside. If you violate this ban, you could face a fine of up to $500. You can find an updated list of burn bans in our area on our website at newschannel10.com. As the flu continues to spread in Amarillo, one strand is becoming more common. News Channel 10's Nicolette Perrone joins us now live in the studio with what medical professionals are asking you to do to stop the spread of the illness. Lawmakers strike a deal while President Trump and Beto O'Rourke host opposing rallies in Texas. We'll take you to those rallies and update you on border wall negotiations coming up on the News at 10. Last May, Trayton and Jaden Brees lost their mother in a car accident because she was not wearing a seatbelt. But the two brothers have turned their tragic loss into someone else's gain. In the last five months, they've handed out 1,100 bumper stickers, asking residents to please buckle up because you have loved ones. Here, stand up there on that bumper there. Potter County Sheriff Brian Thomas helped the boys get the stickers on local patrol cars and fire trucks so their message can be seen all across town. And now TxDOT is spreading their message across the state. Earlier this month, TxDOT invited the brothers to the state capitol to speak during the launch of their annual Click It or Ticket campaign. It was really cool, and they actually added Click It or Ticket or worse. They actually added that or worse because it's worse than getting a ticket. You can actually lose a life. A life like Christy Brees, who might have survived if she had been buckled up. I think she would be really, really proud of us because we're doing this in her memory and we won't let it just stop here. We want it to be nationwide. And soon it will be. Did you drive 
drive to Austin. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration is featuring the boys in their latest seatbelt campaign. The film crew was recently in Amarillo to capture their story, to share their message with the entire country. We feel good because um, we just wanted to get our message out there and out there and we think that's going to get it out there better. It's amazing that um, that they've gotten a national attention on a campaign that is so much needed. Um, in the same sentence, though, it's sad of why this campaign is going on. You know, you got two little boys that lost their mom. They'll never have mom again. The boys are also working on getting signs like these put up on highways across the country. I think it's getting a lot of attention because that hurt in a seat, seat belt explains a lot because the loved ones part is, um, is the heart and, and the seat belt is for buckling up. And we're just two little kids that went to their dad about this just about five months ago and now it's already to the state capitol. I hope that somebody will listen to them. I hope that not just somebody, I hope that a lot of people will listen to what they're trying to tell you. Put your dad gum seat belts on. It can happen to anybody. And if something like this happens to you, just think of where your family, your children are gonna be. Put them in their shoes that they're in right now. Seven-year-old Ethan Thompson is on a mission to battle the dark side and leukemia. Here's Star Wars Episode Make-A-Wish. A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, in Florida, young Ethan traveled to Disney World to train to become a Jedi Master. He learned how to wield a lightsaber and how to battle the dark side so he can protect the panhandle from evil. The force is strong with this seven-year-old. Unlike most kids his age, he battles the dark side often with long hospital stays, chemo, and lots of medication. But for one whole week, he didn't have to worry about cancer. Instead, his only fear the force is strong with this one. was taking on the ultimate bad guy. Well, there was these like five masters that teach us. I did moves, they teach us moves. And with a little help from Yoda. He told us trust in the force and, and um, use the force. Those moves came in handy. We forced um, Darth Vader back into the temple. Ethan's mom, Christina, says Make-A-Wish gave them the trip of a lifetime with unforgettable experiences from the moment they arrived at the airport. Ever since he was diagnosed, a, a lot has changed in our lives. And um, w there's so many things that are stressful and complicated. And this was something that we could do with them and just go. And they planned the whole thing. Make-A-Wish believes wishes bring a new hope. And hope brings healing. Christina says her family experienced firsthand the power of a wish. The impact that this has on, on families and on these kids, there aren't even words to describe it. There is no price that you can put on something like that. And after, sorry, <laughs> after everything that we've gone through, that he's gone through, to just go have fun together as a family, it was unbelievable and if you're looking to donate to something it's just such a good cause. Make-A-Wish will grant at least 30 wishes to children just like Ethan this year. However, right now the nonprofit is experiencing a donation deficit of about $20,000 to make those wishes possible. If you would like to help Make-A-Wish or volunteer for the organization, visit our website at newschannel10.com.